the catacomb skill is by far the slowest grindable skill right now. However, everyone wants to have the highest level possible because you become significantly stronger in dungeons with a high skill level. You can also use your late game gear inside of dungeons making you flat out overpowered. Today we'll go into detail for some tips and tricks I have for you to grind catacombs floors faster and to get higher levels as efficiently as possible. If you could take a second and subscribe, that would be appreciated since we're nearly at 20,000 subscribers and at 30,000, I'll dress up like Bonzo for my YouTube rank stream. So if you want to see that, click the red button. Now let's grind some dungeons. The first and most obvious thing is to play the latest floor that you possibly can beat. This is because floors exponentially give more experience, so floor 1 gives way less experience than floor 2, and gives significantly less experience than something like floor 6. And of course, go fast, that's a given. Get as many runs in as you can, and through that, this video I'll be giving you tips on how to go through these floors as fast as possible. So without further ado, let's dive into a dungeons run. The first tip I have is actually before you even start the run, and this is to bring a rabbit potion for you and your teammates. This is because rabbit allows you to jump higher, which just makes overall movement in dungeons easier. You'll be able to leap to places that have secrets without having to worry about spamming your aspect at the end and kind of misplacing where you use it and end up spamming it to a wall. Overall, I found that rabbit potions save the most amount of time while playing dungeons, which is why I recommend them. Also, make sure to have multiple mages in your party. This is because mages have the ability to use other weapons such as the Spirit Scepter and things that do massive AoE damage. I'll get into why AoE is a little bit better later on, but just know that having 2 or 3 mages in your party is pretty much ideal. Don't worry about having duplicates for the specific mage class because, well, it doesn't really make too much of a difference. Mages will still do basically the same damage and is much less important than having things like 2 healers or 2 berserkers, which would deal significantly less damage. This next one is a bit more odd, and something you may not have thought of, and that's to use a YouTube guide for secrets. A lot of top players use either a Discord full of GIFs, or YouTube videos split up into chapters covering every room. Personally, I find YouTube to be better since you can scroll through every room in a matter of seconds, and with a good amount of practice you will know exactly how far into the video to skip for each room in dungeons. And with time, you'll slowly memorize different paths to take for each room, allowing you to get every secret in a room much faster. Having the ability to find secrets quickly in dungeons can turn you into a top contender for late parties. Higher catacombs people might let you in their party if you can quickly get a ton of secrets while also not dying. Secrets are important to get catacombs XP since they raise your score, so obviously finding all of them as fast as possible is ideal. I'll leave a link to my personal favorite guide for finding all of the secrets in dungeons so you can start learning as fast as possible. This one is mostly geared toward people who have low catacombs levels and are trying to beat later floors and that's to sacrifice damage for survivability. If you die, you are basically useless. It's better to be alive and somewhat weak than to play the whole floor as a ghost, just taking up everyone's revive tokens. Use reforges like a giant and reinforced instead of fierce, necrotic, or other meta reforges. This can help you survive that much better and may even be the difference between a failed run and a 40 million coin profit from a chest. Now let's go over area of effect weapons such as the Spirit Scepter, Flower of Truth, and Red Lord Sword. These three weapons are used by higher skilled players because of their ability to clear rooms and dungeons enemies faster than someone with just a regular sword. Weapons that explode on impact are much better for taking out smaller enemies since you can handle large groups of mobs in a matter of seconds. Make sure your mage carries AoE weapons with them to speed up the time it takes to clear out rooms making it much easier and safer to look for mob secrets. Also, open the blood room early. Think of the blood room as an auto-scrolling screen in a platformer game like Mario. You can't complete this room until it's done spawning enemies, so it's better to get this door open early and let the timer start ticking so you aren't stuck waiting for the last enemies to spawn with nothing left to do. Next is something everyone should do, and that's to try and get more mana. This is so you can use the aspect of the end as often as you like. A little trick for this is adding the ultimate wise enchant on the sword. This makes it cost less mana to use, making it easier to spam. The AOTE is the fastest way to travel in dungeons and tight spaces, since you can basically teleport wherever you look. This helps with reaching high up secrets or chasing down bats that are annoying to hunt down. These next two are slightly less conventional and require the use of mods and texture packs. Some of you may have seen that bats are bright green for me, and breakable walls are a solid light blue color. By using a mod called Not Enough Updates, you get access to neat features like the ability to turn bats bright green, which makes them significantly easier to see. 
you can also enable a setting to see how much profit you will make from each chest at the end of a dungeon run. So you can spend less time looking at chests and more time doing runs. Another tip is to use a texture pack that differs breakable walls from normal walls. You can use my texture pack in the description to give a chroma outline to those blocks, making them easier to see. Both of these allow you to do runs faster since you can see where secret areas and bats hide. A pro tip with bats is use the mage's ultimate thunderstorm ability in a bat room. This basically kills the bat instantly since it damages nearby mobs. Save this ability for hunting down those pesky bats. Next is to make sure you slay the boss, since slaying the boss gives significantly more XP than dying before it. Many players think that dying before the boss is a good idea, and this is not the case. The only situation where you should intentionally die before the boss is if your party is positive they are not able to defeat it, in which you should just play the highest floor possible and die before the boss. But anytime you can, make sure to take out that boss, since you'll get so much more XP. There are guides and strats to make every boss in dungeons quicker and easier to take out. I won't go into detail here since the video would be too long, but a quick google search will get the job done. A very good idea is to get into some form of voice call with your teammates and develop certain phrases for key situations. Things like 5 out of 7 in bottom left L can be a quick way to let your teammates know the L-shaped room in the bottom left corner of the map still has two secrets left to find. You can also save each other's life by calling out for the healer to use their wish ability faster than it takes to type out wish in full caps as you get annihilated by a skeleton master. Being able to communicate effectively with your team can drastically increase the efficiency in which you run dungeons. Give it a try. Next time you're in a call with friends, try learning a few different signals and see if you can speed up those times in dungeon runs. Dungeons is also significantly less boring when talking to others meaning you can grind longer and get more EXP without slowly going insane while we wait for more floors to release. This last one is somewhat of a joke, but there is some science to back it up, and that's to listen to fast-paced music while grinding. Do you have a playlist you like to listen to? Try adding a few faster-paced songs. Your brain will try and mimic performing actions closer to the rhythm of the song, making you input more actions the faster the song. Don't believe me? Try clicking with the rude sandstorm playing in the background. That's all I have for you today. If you have any of your own tips I didn't mention, leave them in the comments for others to see. Remember to subscribe if you haven't. Just one last thing to do while the end card plays. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic day. Take care.